Uh, speaking of civil societies and media houses, how do you see their role in reviving public discourse today, which is actually, in my opinion, it's fanatically attacked by virtue of exercising a basic democratic rights, which is questioning the government. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, who is responsible uh, for, for where we find ourselves today? Uh, I do call this not just, you know, I, I say that lynching uh, is we must recognize lynching that is happening in India today to be hate crimes, as I said. But it's a specific kind of hate crime which I would call command hate crime. So, uh, so what I describe as command hate crime is hate crime that is, that is in a sense facilitated, encouraged uh, from the top. Now, it is not my claim that Mr. Modi and Mr. Amit Shah and uh, Yogi Adityanath sit down every morning and say, let's do a lynching here and let's do a lynching there tomorrow. That's not at all what I'm saying. But what they have done is that they have they've created an environment where there is, you know, it, it's uh, this anger uh, uh, and hatred is seen as legitimate, righteous, understandable when it targets, uh, particularly when it targets Muslims. And, and, and so, uh, uh, so there's, uh, you know, the garlanding was something that, that uh, of, uh, so in, um, so in Raigar, uh, in so Ramgarh, in Jharkhand, uh, we find that uh, this was the one rare case where actually the police officer was somebody of integrity and he did his duty and it was an excellent uh, investigation and uh, after the investigation the uh, uh, the judge gave uh, gave convicted people within nine months of the lynching mm -hmm. it was an exemplary uh, set of actions uh, but when the high court releases those convicted uh, for that crime in, uh, in uh, uh, and uh, they get uh, released on bail from from prison mm -hmm. uh, a union minister actually uh, calls them to his home immediately as they're released and garlands them mm -hmm. or uh, there was somebody called Afrazul uh, 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 a migrant uh, worker from Bengal in uh, Ra Rajsamand in Rajasthan who was killed uh, by, uh, you know, somebody uh, called Shambhulal Dregar wanted to do a performative killing of a Muslim on the 25th uh, anniversary of the Babri Masjid demolition and so he gets this person and he gets his nephew to record it uh, and uh, with his steady hand you see a 14 year old boy is recording while this man is, uh, he just doesn't know what has happened, he first bludgeons him then he hacks him into pieces. He, puts petrol and sits him on fire. Uh, now, now in, in a situation, and then he gives a rant. Yeah. But what happens immediately after is that the local minister uh, and uh, the local M uh, MLA, MP, they all are part of a WhatsApp group which calls uh, the killer Sher e Mewar, which is the, the lion of Mewar, and they collect lakhs of rupees. Uh, uh, in his support, so so that's what I call valorization. It's not even just legitimizing, but it's va they are the he he is the hero. Uh, there was a religious prof uh, prof procession of tableaus uh, the next Ramnavmi after this incident, and one of the tableaus was actually depicting uh, Shambhulal Dregar, the killer of Afrazul, yeah. and he, he had they had a man prone on the ground with his foot on him. Uh, 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 so, 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 that is why I call it command hate, yeah. and uh, and it, it, it so so there is a responsibility, but uh, of the political leadership. But I think that for us to believe that this is really a problem created by the government and by the RSS, uh, in which we all are are, are not complicit, I think uh, is uh, is is dangerously flawed. Uh, imagine that the government changes in 2019. It's not as if everything is going to get sorted out, because yeah. uh, there is uh, uh, what the role that the media has played, both by significant silences, and it required uh, a lot of us to to collect information, to go on these journeys, to keep talking about it, for us to even 
acknowledge and it is really uh, the digital media that has created spaces uh, you know like news click or uh, or scroll or the wire through which people are able to tell the stories at all yeah. and the mainstream media uh, has largely been silent about it a lot of it uh, endorses and legitimizes uh, in effect uh, the hate uh, uh, and uh, and the stereotyping so it is uh, and, and 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 then you have um, mr modi uh, coming in very very you know when when uh, when there were attacks on kashmiri students after pulwana so he comes on and and he says in an election speech that the the rage that is burning in your heart is also burning in my heart so in a sense you're giving and of course all his uh, cabinet ministers uh, 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 and, and and so on so uh, akhlaq killers uh, alleged killers uh, in dadri uh, get jobs in the ntpc in their family members and uh, when one of them dies in jail he, he is wrapped in the national flag uh, and the union minister is at in attendance so so there is is the role of of, of Uh, the culpability of mr modi and his cabinet and his party and the rss is undeniable but i feel that they have legitimized a hatred that that clearly was there in our in our hearts and minds and uh, you know it's almost like they've dug deep tube wells into our souls and all of this hatred is spouting out but we need to recognize that there's something that we have to resolve within ourselves right. and, and and most importantly uh, you know i think the large majority of us uh, may be, may not be guilty of participating in hate violence mm. but we are guilty of our silences right. and and they can be in my mind uh, you know it, and it reminds me a lot of how germans responded in the interwar years uh, in the 1930s um, as jews were you know as as we were leading to the holocaust uh, if the, for 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 the rest of the german population uh, there was no response no reaction no outrage and i think we are pretty much in a similar kind of place um, the large majority of us in india today uh, Uh, and uh, and we need to question our silences so i often i'm speaking also through my writing and uh, uh, when i speak to uh, audiences i i say that you don't you're not obliged to give me any answer to explain your silences but i do request that you search your own heart for right. for your reasons for your silence and there can be only three reasons as i can understand the first of them is that they could be four because a lot of the german later generations uh, of people asked them why did you keep silent and many of them said we did not know so i said firstly we are not going to allow you that alibi we will continue to tell the story and that is why we are writing books and and speaking out uh, but the other three reasons could be the first of them is that i am frightened to speak and uh, and uh, Uh, if that is uh, you know uh, and there is a sense of fear so that right. could be one reason the second is i don't care because i'm not a muslim i'm not a dalit it's not going to happen to me so i'm in my safe space and i don't care but the third and i f- find this the most dangerous and it's not that unusual is that in my heart i actually share the same uh, same sentiments of hate so in a sense i have outsourced to the mob uh the acting out of my hate uh, i won't go and join the mob but it's it's all right that it's it's good that it's happening yeah. and the muslims had it coming upon them there, there's that kind of of feeling of endorsement so so it is my the hate in my own heart and so therefore i feel that we'll have to you know and the poison has spread so so far and so wide uh, just returned my most recent journey was in bihar uh, in and so sita mari what happened say it was last durga puja uh, 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 rumor goes out nobody knows where the rumor came from that Dur- uh, durga ji's statue the arm was was damaged so the mob comes out and wants to avenge a Mus- a muslim so an 82 year old man is walking down the road with his white beard and tehmat and skull cap and they 
crowd catches hold of him and as usual their pictures and the pictures show actually young boys substantially uh, uh, um, making up the crowd 16 18 years of age uh, all with uh, anything rods and things to bludgeon him there was even a woman in this one in a sari and she was part of the mob with, with something in her hand to get. Now they, they bludgeon him to death, he becomes unconscious, he's still alive and they make a pyre of him and, and they set him on fire. Now this is the kind of poison that I'm seeing in, you know, in, in, as I said, I've done 26 journeys in four, uh, 14 states. And I feel that we, we, we have we are quite, quite substantially destroyed uh, as a society uh, which is built around the idea of fraternity, which is written into the constitution, mm -hmm. and and it is in this deeply uh, poisoned uh, uh, environment, a completely broken, divided society that we have to recognize, take responsibility, and rebuild. Mm -hmm. And we can rebuild it with, uh, for me, the most radical idea of, of our times is really of fraternity, of solidarity, of love, and we have to use this to rebuild uh, uh, what lies uh, so so badly broken yeah. uh, uh, and to reclaim our own humanity. Uh, you start the book by saying that you're intensely worried about the way we are going because our future generations will question. What could we do at this time? Yeah. Um, and speaking of our silence and complicity, you, you spoke about the reasons why we are silent, the possibilities. You also spoke about how do we battle that. And who do we need to battle? Number one, the silent bystander. Number second, and most importantly, <laughs> once we call our own. Yeah. And third, and most, most important, is ourselves. Yeah. Now, now, turning the tables and asking the question of onus, who, like, you know, turning the tables and uh, from our political leaders to, you're, ourselves. to ourselves. Yeah. You're, so, my question is, given how, in, in your understanding, what is the role of ordinary citizens, given that we're disempowered in th through state-backed sanctions and backlash, mm -hmm. death threats, rape threats, trolling, and other kinds of uh, you know possibilities of violence? How do we sort of cultivate public conscience of compassion, empathy, and even extending our solidarities? And what goes beyond extending our solidarities? What more can we do as ordinary citizens? Yeah, you know, it is since it is a battle of hearts and minds, it is really, and uh, every one of us, and I'm sure everyone who's, who's going to watch this program will be part of a family WhatsApp group where you have, you know, people spouting hate and, and the odd one, and uh, people quite nervous about sort of uh, opposing or speaking out against that. So it is really on our dining tables, the conversations we have, what conversations we have with our friends on our WhatsApp groups, etc., that we will need to engage uh, and uh, uh, the, you know, ethically there can be many, uh, many ways of answering the question that you did. Uh, I, I read somewhere something that Prophet Muhammad actually had said, which I like a lot, where he said that when you confront injustice, what is your duty as a human being? And um, so he, he says, at the very least, respond from the heart. So, so my, I feel that even if, as a society, we begin to care. Uh, so, so when, when a 14-year-old uh, uh, boy or this old man of 82 uh, is killed, so I think of my own father or, or I, th I think of my own son or brother. Uh, uh, in this situation and I feel the pain. So when uh, Pehlu Khan is being lashed on his back, I feel the pain on my own back. It is that sense of, so I feel that at the very least, uh, let us respond from the heart. Uh, let us feel a sense of solidarity. Then those of us, as he says, the next, uh, and the, the braver and the finer among us, will respond from the tongue which is speaking out against this injustice. Uh, and, and so at many of us should care, most of us should care, some of us should, should have the courage to speak out. And then, and then he said the finest of hum, human beings are those who respond to the injustice with their hands, which means that we act against the injustice. And I think it, it, it's a, to me, it's, it's a very good 
answer to the question of what, what, what can we do as citizens in these difficult times. Okay. Um, I think my last question to you would be, um, on, on that powerful note, my last question to you would be, uh, so the book, how, how do you think it's relevant today in 2019, given we're so close to the uh, run for general elections? Yeah, this is, you know, the 2019 is, is going to be one, one of the most important elections uh, that, that India will see. Uh, and I have no doubt about that. Uh, if we bring back, to my mind, if we bring back the government, uh, that uh, that we elected uh, in 2014. See, in 2014, there were some many fig leaves, uh, you know, many people, and not even fig leaves. I think it is true that uh, there was a, a disillusionment and anger with uh, with the performance of the earlier government. And there was a weariness, and there was some people who voted for Mr. Modi uh, for his the history that he carried from Gujarat and 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 the communal uh, polarization that he stood for, but there were uh, I think millions of young people. Every second Indian is below the age of twenty five who legitimately aspires for jobs, for a better life, and he he seemed to promise that 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 in his leadership there would be jobs for the millions. And, and I think that uh, those were also dreams that he had offered, that he would fight corruption. Um, now, everything else no longer carries any credibility. So, uh, so this has been a period of, 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 of jobless growth. The agrarian crisis has only deepened. The economy is in, in bad shape. So as I said, now all fig leaves have been uh, removed. Uh, if you, if people continue to vote for Mr. Modi, it is now frankly, openly, uh, unambiguously for what he represents in terms of his communal polarization, uh, and, and, and and so on. So if if this government returns to power, then it represents the fact. I mean, I I keep arguing uh, that that I do, do still believe that the majority of Indians, Hindus and Muslims and people of other faiths still want, to, want a country where, where we live together with peace and respect. Uh, and it is a small minority still who, who believes in hate and, and, uh, and uh, the dominance of, of the Hindu majority. But if we, this time we vote, um, the way that we did in 2014 without any fig leaves uh, and illusions, then I would be afraid that I was completely wrong and that we then as a majority have turned uh, communal and majoritarian uh, and, and endorse an environment or, 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 or want a country in which minorities are forced to live with fear and hate. Um, so that, that, so that is by the choice. It does not matter what the option is. Uh, you know, that is uh, uh, much less important. But I believe that we have to, uh, we have to, you know, f um, say that we are against the politics of hate uh, unambiguously. But I would like to say that, assume that this government falls, it's not as if our problems are sorted out. In fact, I think it, it, it's when we, we, we need to begin to acknowledge uh, the extent to which the, the poisons are there in our hearts and, and uh, have, have spread in, uh, in our society. And we will have to demand from the new governments that, that come in uh, that, they, uh, they that they take a clear stand in endorsement of that idea of India, which is embedded in the constitution, uh, which is that is a country that belongs equally to all, that they must do so, but beyond the government, I think that we, as a society, will have to do what what uh, Germany did after the Holocaust. Actually, is actually uh, uh, thinking about what we are teaching our young children, what we uh, what we nego uh, you know negotiate in classrooms, uh, what we uh, transact in 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 our media and social media spaces, what we transact in our personal 
lives and relationships. I think that the, the, it will we, we would take from where we are now, uh, we would take generations to 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 restore and reclaim if we even be, recognize that we need to do this. And on that note, you end your book by saying that after all, we have to rely on love as a radical idea. So thank you, Mr. Manda. Thank you so much for giving us time. Manda continues to tell us stories that shake our conscience because they ought to remind us that those who face the cruelest brunt are ones amongst us, the ones we call our own. We hope our viewers found this discussion very useful. Thank you for watching News Click and Indian Cultural Forum.